fantastic morning that you have given us. Lord God, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm so thankful this morning to be up and kicking and ready to start a live. Uh, I just thank God for it. Amen. Being on this with you this morning, God bless you, everyone, on this magnificent Monday morning. Now, I'm getting ready to start to do some deliver sessions in a few minutes. I'm trying to get some out of here, some wisdom here on uh, curses examined and confronting them in the spirit. That is what I'm working on today. Curses examined and confronting them in the spirit. I am looking forward to God really, really blessing. I'm looking for the anointing of God moving mightily. Praise God for the grace and the glory of God. Hallelujah. I want everybody to let me know. Somebody let me know whether you're hearing my voice nice and strong. Could you tap that in real quick? I'll see you right on Facebook. Let me know you're able to hear my voice nice and strong. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be coming out of the book of Numbers, chapter 23, beginning at verse 20 through 23. And I'm going to be talking about curses, famine, and confronting them in the spirit. They must be confronted in the spirit. Thank you, Sister Speaks. Appreciate you. God bless you. Amen. That's right. Good, good. You hear me good and clear. Well, praise God. Let me go on and work this thing here because I've got to get her done, y'all, and then get to my first deliverance session this morning and counseling session this morning. Now, um, Numbers chapter 23, uh, beginning verse 20 and 23, well, you know the story. Balaam was told by Balak to go and curse Israel. Matter of fact, he was being paid to curse them. And when he went to go try to curse them, God would not allow him to do it. And wh what I saw in this uh, particular Bible truth was, is that the enemy cannot just wake up yarn and decide to curse us. He has to have what we call open doors. And thank God, I'm going to give you at the beginning of this, of this gospel message, Thank God for the cross of Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus and the atonement that he sacrificed to break generational and family line curses, curses of iniquity, bloodline curses, amen, and iniquities done through the occult or perversion. Now look what it says here in Numbers 23, verse 20. This is what he says here. This is Balaam speaking. He said, I have received commandment to bless, and he have blessed, and I cannot reverse it. This warlock, realized that he could not reverse a blessing off of Israel. He was powerless. What does that tell me? That those folks out there doing conjuring and witchcraft can't just wake up yarn and decide to curse us any kind of way. They need an open door. Listen to what it says in verse 21. He have not beheld, now here goes, check this out. Here goes why the enemy could not get a curse in on Israel. Number one, verse 21, he have not held iniquity in Jacob. Now, this word iniquity is the word Avon, which actually means uh, wickedness, a, a strong wickedness and, and perverseness. Listen to this. He have not, not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have he seen perverseness. The word perverseness here means obstinate or stubbornness in Israel. The Lord, his God is with him. Another thing, his God is with him. Got that? The shout of a king is among him. Now, when I read this, here goes what I see in it. Number one, it took iniquity to open the door, wickedness to open the door for this warlock to curse God's people. Number two, perverseness. That means to be rebellious and obstinate, refusing to surrender, refusing to be obedient. That opened, would have opened the door to curses. Number two, number three, the Lord his God is with him. In short, he could not curse him because he stayed with his God. He stayed with his Redeemer. Is anybody hearing me? This is why the enemy tried to pull on us so hard to get us or our children to backslide away from God. Here goes another one. The shout of a king is among them. That means they had the shout of victory. Their faith was high. Their determination was strong. So he could not curse them. Why again, class? because he could not find iniquity in them. That means they repented of their sins and the sins of the forefathers and the sins of the generation. There was no perverseness or rebellion. They surrendered under the mighty hand of God. Therefore, the enemy could not get a curse in on them. The Lord his God is with him. 
In other words, they knew that God was with them. They, they knew that they were never forsaken nor left alone. And the fourth one is they had the shadow of a king that had, amen, strong faith in their God. Verse 22 and 23, I like this verse, and I'm going to read it. God brought them out of Egypt. He had, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely, now look at verse 23, guys. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Why did he say there is no enchantment, no spells, and no witchcraft against Jacob? Because they were not walking in iniquity. They were not perverse. They knew the shadow of the king was among them, and they knew they had glory be to God, their God was with them. So verse 23, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what have God wrought? So right at the top, I'm gonna pray this before I just start going down, open doors and stuff. This is how you engage them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we close all open doors of iniquity in our family line the sins of our fathers, the generational strongholds, the hidden secret bondages that have operated in our bloodline. We don't break up the three or four generations. We break them back to the days of Adam. We break them back to the very foundation when curses and iniquities begin to enter the earth. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we repent of all rebellion. We repent of all the rebellion that we've done throughout our life on all levels, on all levels. Not only rebellion against God's word, but rebellion against society, rebellion against laws, rebellion against parents. We repent of the rebellion we did, Father. By God realizing that we've seen the same rebellion that we enacted, we see it come in our own generation. Father God, also, Lord God, forgive us when we have grieved or left you, Father, walked away from your Holy Spirit, backslid away from you. I ask forgiveness and cleanse us from that. Next thing also, Father God, forgive the sin of doubt and unbelief. For Lord God, the shout of a king is among us and our God is with us. You know what, guys? The other day I went to visit my mom. And my mom is my closest person that I pray with, person that I confer with. It's my mother, my 91-year-old mother. And we were talking about family. We were talking about generational curses and generational strongholds. And I began to talk to her and I said, Mom, you know, that demonic power that you saw in my older brother and me, I've seen it manifest in my nephews. I've seen it manifest in our grandchildren. My mother looked at me and she said, she said, son, we have been really praying hard against that gener those generational curses of drug addiction, of alcoholism, that, by, that strong bondage. And I said something to mom. I leaned over, put my hand on my mom's shoulder. I say, mom, guess what? And she looked at me and smiled. I said, guess what? You prayed against the generational iniquities that was released in our bloodline. And it caused me to get saved. It caused my brother to get saved. Mom, I want you to know this right now. We are not giving up on those that have been in our family line who are still bound and rustling by that demonic bondage. Now, that don't mean we're not gonna agree with them. That don't mean we don't have to show tough love sometimes, but we refuse to allow the enemy to have that generation. Some of you out there know exactly what I'm talking about. There are sins and iniquities and strongholds in your bloodline that although you have to put your foot down, tell them what you're not gonna tolerate, you have to deal with both the flesh in the individual and also the demons in them, but you will not give up on God being able to deliver them. Now, let me go down some of these, how did these strongholds actually got in? By the way, guys, what Balaam did to curse Israel, he had to position them into a place wherein they would commit fornication with, with, uh, with folks that of another nation and worship their idols. So Balaam took and told Balak, look, I cannot curse these people unless they give me an open door. And they have not given an open door, but if you take my advice, and this is the way the enemy operates, the enemy gives advice in the spirit to demonic temptations by putting on generational strongholds and things that Christ or God the Father has said that we're not to operate in. And he pulls us into them through temptations. So guess what he did to Israel? 
Balaam got Israel cursed by bringing in uh, women from another nation with their idols. And the children of Israel began to commit fornication with them and it cursed them as a nation. And it caused an open door and they were defeated. Some of you out there listening at me, some of the defeats that we've had in our life is because we veered away from the truth we know. Some of the defeats that we've had by generational curses are direct results of the iniquities and sins of the fathers, sins of the mothers, generational stronghold of our elders. And sweetheart, I maintain to tell you that we can break them. Now, I want to say this too. When you are interceding and praying, or you may even hear it in a dream, when you get a prophetic pull in your spirit that there is a iniquity and a stronghold that is coming at your life, although you can't put your finger on where it came from, always smell the rat of generational and family line strongholds. One of the characteristics of a generational and family line stronghold is it will repeat itself in different people in your family. It will be the stronghold. Now, for um, for my family, I'll go ahead and tell the truth, shame the devil. I'm transparent like this, not to put down my family, but to show you how to engage and deal with demonic powers on this level. The stronghold in my family line, as most of you know, is drug addiction. That demon has showed his head throughout my family line. Now, it, it's, it's repetitious, it's vicious, it has destroyed different people's lives in my family line. It would have destroyed the gifts in my life and not the spirit of God and me yielding to the spirit of God and coming against these cur curses. They would have taken me out and I would have been a drug addict instead of the apostle here preaching deliverance to you all. Matter of fact, it took the prayers. One of the things I love that's so cool about my mom is that my mom prayed down the demons that were in me. Are you hearing me? Matter of fact, I we we were as we were talking uh, the other day. I said, "Do you know the same way that these spirits had me out there? They're doing the same thing to different ones of our family members." Mom, we got we're going to come together and pray and engage them in the spirit, and we're going to break their power. We're going to come against them and ask the Father through intercession to break them off of our family line and that they will wake up and come to the truth. Now, here, I'm going to give you a list of things how to recognize that these things are operating. The first thing as a curse does is create negativity in the mind. When there is a, a curse operating, it causes a person to operate in pure lack of faith, negativity. It looks like they have no positive attitude about nothing. But that is that. Now, that's just number one. There is a curse on a family line when all you hear is negativity. Matter of fact, this might explain some of your relatives that you got that are just negative. Whenever you're around, you're just negative. No matter who it is, you are looking at a family line and generational curse of negativity. Matter of fact, when it is a curse of negativity, they're always talking poor mouth. They're always putting somebody down. They're always talking defeat. And then when you, you feel, you might go to visit them feeling pretty good in the spirit. And if you're not careful, you leave feeling like, my God, they just dropped a track of the trailer on me with all their negativity. Are you hearing me? Some of you got this in your family line. When you are praying, and it might be your rel it might be your parent. It might be a relative of yours, family line. When you deal with that thing and engage that, you have to arm yourself with the shield of faith and refuse to allow the negative words to create the atmosphere that demons can dwell in. So one family line generational curse is negativity. The another trait is, that's connected with this curse is man, is that no matter where you go. No matter where they go, it seems like things just don't work out for them. It's like now it is a generational curse when you find the spirit of sabotage constantly following you. Matter of fact, some of the things I ask people when I counsel them, I say to them, when they tell me I work hard, I, I just about work my brains out. And I've got the degrees and it seems like nothing works out for me. 
I asked him a question. Number one, I asked him, I said, look, I said, right when you were raised up, did y'all struggle all the time? And most of the time, when it is a generational curse and a family line curse of constant struggling, they were grew up in a place. Even though you moved, you, you got nice clothes on, you got look like you got a nice house, but you yourself is still suffering from that stronghold that keeps fighting you from trying to get ahead. That is a generational curse and it needs to be broken. If you can trace back the same actions happening in your life, happening now in the, in the, in the past and in the future of your life, you are looking at a generational or family line curse. Brother Ivory, what do I do? You address that thing in the spirit. As a matter of fact, I remember praying for one, one family that had a business. Their business, that young lady's business was going terrible. And she could not understand why she could gain a business, but never prosper financially. And what I ended up finding, and some of you have heard this story before, her father had owned a construction business and beaten many people out of their money. And the enemy used that as a generational stronghold to try to react on his children what happened to other people's children. The devil went before the courts of heaven and tried to claim whatsoever a man sought that also shall he reap. Therefore, that cho his children should have coming on their business the same thing that their father calls other people's families. And when we prayed for that, God broke that thing. Now listen, when I talk about when we pray, all I do is try to teach people to pray yourself. Did anybody out there get this? These teachings on these videos are not for you to have to call me. Now, God bless you. If you call me, if you have to sign up for a counseling session, my time will be compensated. That's for sure. But I teach these videos so you don't have to call me, so that you can do it yourself because you are a believer. So if the enemy is attacking you, or in you're always fighting the progress, it seems, I don't like the word bad luck, but it seems like you can't get ahead no matter what you do. That is a sign. That is a result of a generational curse, a stronghold that is fighting you on every turn. Are you hearing me? These curses also show up in people's life. Number three, they show up in people's life where they have no vision. It's like they have no drive. They have no inspiration from the Almighty. Matter of fact, but this there is a demonic stronghold that operates in some family line curses wherein people don't dream. And when I say dream, I'm not just talking about sleep. I'm talking about they just have no vision. When you ask them, what do you desire to be? They say, I don't know. You ask them, is there any drive inside of you to create anything, become something? I don't know. Now, I'm not talking about a little child who's so young, who don't know what it must do. I am talking about even up to adult life. There is no drive inside of you. It, it, listen, let me tell you something. I believe in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, that it's God that works in you, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. I believe that God works in us. Many of you listening at me right now, you have had a dream and a vision on the inside to become something. And many of you have started driving towards that doing things toward that. You dream about success. You can feel that success is close to you. But do you know that there are some people who have family line and generational curses on their life where they don't dream? I know that the first time that this was enacted, when Cain killed Abel, he, he became a wanderer and a vagabond in the earth. That means he had no certain place to settle in. He was always roaming from place to place, never getting ahead, seeming like something was chasing down behind him. In the name of the Lord God Almighty, I ask the Father to break that spirit off of people. Are you hearing me? Look, I know what it is to wake up every day with, 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 with vision for the day. Matter of fact, my, my good friend, Dr. Jackie Green, that's, that's about our buddy that we work together with, Ralph and Deliverance University, Dr. Jackie Green has like 20 year projections in which she thinks, man, when I first met Jackie, I was like, girl, you are off the hook. When we sat down and go over to school and go over different things, 
This woman of God's creative, creative visionary insight is so powerful that she looks at 20, 20 years, 25 years and further. I'm sitting looking at her going like, wow. I mean, she even ignites me. But I'm trying to tell you, something is wrong when you have no drive, no dream, no vision. I'm going to say it again. Something is wrong in the spirit when you have no drive, no dream, and no vision. When all you can say, well, what are, what are your plans for life? Mm -hmm. Something wrong. That is a stronghold. And if you look at some of the patterns in your family, listen to what I'm saying. You got people in your family whose life seems like they're going nowhere. This is not against the person. This is against the warfare. Once again, this is not me putting down people. This is me speaking against the type of warfare that this type of generational person will do. They will operate and you will they will hide and you never even know what's going on. And you, for some reason, most of your life has been just no drive for nothing. No pull for anything. That is a sign of a stronghold for sure. And I want to tell you, this thing can be broken. The Bible says it like this. The people perish because they have no knowledge. Amen. Without a vision, the people perish. I mean to tell you, there has to be an inspiration, an aspiration of the Almighty beating inside of you. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus that the spirit of the living God will cause you to come out of spiritual slumber. I pray in the name of Jesus that the inspiration of the Almighty ignite in your spirit, man, and break those strongholds that are in your bloodline that tries to make you a pauper, that tries to make you a person with no vision, no dream. Also, I rebuke stronghold that comes against your creativity. I rebuke, number one, the stronghold that stops you from having any vision, dream, or creativity. I command in the name of Jesus Christ that the inspiration of the Almighty break through the strongholds that are trying to build this in your life. And I ask the Father to loose you. I ask the Father to stir up in your most holy faith in the Holy Ghost. The fourth trait, amen, of this type of captivity is also destructive marital problems. There are strongholds that in the bloodline, in the family line, I've known a family line that were good. Nobody could get married. It seemed like there could be a date to nowhere, but not a wife to any place. But I've seen strongholds operate on this level. And when you look at your family line, separation and divorce seem to run rampant. That is a thing that has to be engaged in the spirit. Are you hearing me? The Bible said it is not good for a man to be alone, and I believe it. The Bible says whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. I believe it. And uh, listen to me. You have a right to desire to be married. And you have a right to think something is wrong when you can't find a mate. No one attracted to you. Or you only get people that are pure disasters. My dear friend, the stronghold in your life is not hard to identify. And it, the stronghold, look at it. You can sit around and look at auntie and uncle. You can sit around and look at your mother and father. You can look at your grandparents and you say, you know what? There has been a threat in my family that the women and men do not stay married. There has been a threat in my, my family that you can always be the other woman or the other man, but not the wife or husband. There's been a threat in my family line that marriages don't last. My dear friend, that is a generational or a family line curse. And we listen, the Holy Spirit will guide you on how to pray and engage against that. Are you hearing me? Listen, some people are not cursed in not finding a mate. They've just been, been dealing with the one I call not the chosen one coming in their life. So instead of feeling like, oh my God, I'm so cursed, I can't find anyone. No, ask the father to send the chosen one. Also ask the father to show you the patterns that the enemy is using to call you to repeat the same cycle that you see in your family line. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom and the strength to break it. Are you hearing me? These spirits show up causing brokenheartedness, destruction of marriage, separation. Father God, they, and they cause people to even these demonic powers try to repeat in the family line just to keep, there is such a thing 
happy marriage. There is such a thing, amen, of being able to deal with issues and y'all love each other strong enough that that doesn't capture your whole life and have to give up. But there are strongholds that operate in our family lines generationally where these things show up. Let me go to another one. There are another strongholds where our children, and I said this to Evelyn one time, there are strongholds where children have been attacked. Children have been attacked, trafficked, things done to them. That is a demonic pattern. I will never forget. I was doing a counseling session and the person that had called me, I did not know that their family line that they came from was a family line that trafficked children. That, that the prayer that we prayed for this individual was to break the spiritual strongholds of child pornography, children being trafficked. The person came from another country. And lo and behold, although they came to America, they're living in America, that same spirit went after their children. I told Evelyn some time ago, I said, Evelyn, I'm going to tell you something. Some of these missing children that are operating are operating under demonic powers of not only satanic ritual abuse, but they're operating under satanic powers where these spirits are enslaving these children as their generation enslaved others. This is not a flaw, but there, and neither is it always the case. But these spirits will repeat certain things in different eras of time by using different methods. Now, these demonic powers have come after these children. They've come after these children as pedophiles. I said it. They've come after these children as molesters. I said it. And listen, Delaware had a doctor that raped 100 babies, a pediatrician that raped 100 babies. I maintain to tell you that was a generational curse. That was a demonic stronghold in that man. It showed up with a demon. But, I, but I'm telling you, folks, there are a lot of things that are happening to these children out here. These attacks coming at them, they need to be addressed in the spirit because the children didn't ask for it. Even certain things with lust that operate in children too young to even have a clue about it is driven by demonic bondage. Let me go ahead and move past that. You know what? Another sign operating is, is, is what in you can never seem to own your own property. Are you hearing me? There are there are generational and family line curses that not only stops a person from receiving property. Listen at this. There is a generational and family line curse that keeps rivalry and arguing over property until it's paralyzed. Nobody can use it. Yep, I said it. I'll say it again. There are generational and family line curses. I get a lot of calls sometimes where in people own property in other countries, people that are living here own property in their country they came from, and family members are known to steal the property. The family has a stronghold in it of constant rivalry over the land and heritage and, and inheritance. That is demonically driven. Some of them, some of these spirits have literally caused the, the user in the family, the thief, I call it, the thief in the family to steal property from people that is belongs to. And that is demonic, but that is a generational and family line curse. Let me say, share something with you guys. I had an experience one time where a person was going to give me land. And the Spirit of God told me no. Now, it was really amazing because at that particular time, me and Evelyn didn't have no land. We owned not a drop. But when God told me no, I had to tell him, I, I thank you for the offer and I really appreciate it, but I can't do it because I don't feel the release. And guess what? By me not taking that land, now I own several properties. But I could not attach myself to that particular property. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will also cause you to not attach yourself to land, property, and homes that do not belong to your purpose and destiny. Can anybody hear this? I mean, my, our prayer to God better be, Lord, help me to discern what to attach myself to and what belongs to me. But that was an amazing thing. But it made me think about Abraham. Y'all remember that time when Abraham went out and fought against the kings and they went out and brought back all the spoil? And they said, Abraham, we want to give part of this to you. 
And Abraham said, no, I don't think so. I'm not going to take it lest my prosperity look like it came from you instead of God. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, no, don't get all upset when the answer is no. No is a, there is an anointing to no coming from God. Because when God says no to something, even with land and property, if God says no, that means what he got next is better than what you're trying to get now. That's just a whole nother wisdom there. So there are strongholds that operate that try to bind property. Also, signs of a curse operating is sicknesses that won't break. Sicknesses that run through the family line. Inherited sicknesses. Now, I didn't say you're a cur you are a cursed person. I'm saying that is not a blessing from God, and it needs to be seen as something that God is against because I believe that God is a healer. Are you hearing me what I'm saying to you? But there are strongholds that try to operate and what I call generational curses of infirmity. Now, one of the strong ones I constantly run into is infirmities that are affected people's lives by their practice of witchcraft. If you practice witchcraft and the occult, it can open the door to sicknesses and infirmity, also mental problems, all right? I'm going to go ahead with another one. Another area of attack that the enemy attacks with curses is there are some people that have a stronghold. And once again, I met this one predominantly in former practitioners of the occult. I met this with people whose family line have been steeped in dealing with conjure men and root workers. I said it. Yep, I said it. There are some people that it seems like the anointing in them is locked down. They just don't flow. They cannot feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. They seem like they cannot uh, 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 be able to have faith to actually em embrace it. It's like there is a demonic wall there. Listen to me real good. If the anointing in your life is being disrupted all of a sudden out of nowhere, you better smell a red. I expect, just like today, I expect the anointing of God to be blasting today. I expect to bust demons. I expect to speak with wisdom. I expect to operate in all the gifts that are in my life. If not, something is wrong. But there are people for a number of reasons, and one that I prayed for just a few days ago, that when we were praying for that person to get a flow, but they could actually receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And this is not always the case. Once again, this is not always the case. But I have encountered people who were trying to get filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, like it says in the book of Acts. And when they try to start flowing, all of a sudden their throat gets locked and they go, and they cannot use the prayer language. A stronghold stops them from praying. And I've literally had to command the old coat spirits in their family line to back off of their vocal box, let them go. And I've seen them, boom, begin to flow and speak in tongues. Now, this is not always the case. And then I've met other people who are, when you lay hands on them, it's like laying hands on an ice cube. They're dead as a doornail. It's like no flow in them, no reception of the anointing. I actually was with Dr. Diana Brown in Texas. I was in Texas with Dr. Diana Brown, good friend of mine. I love you so dearly, Dr. Diana. And I showed her something. A, a lady came up for prayer. And when I took the lady's hand, her, she, her hand was literally lifeless. There was no life in the spirit in her. She was almost like she was a walking dead. I said to her, I said, prophetess, come here, prophet Diana. I said, feel this woman's hand. She grabbed her hand and she looked at me. She said, good Lord. I said, did you notice there is absolutely no life in her hand? She said, she said yes, it is. I said, the, the anointing of God is being hindered from flowing in her because a spirit of depression had gotten the lady to a place where she was no longer wanting to live. She wanted to die. And her literally her spirit man was like slumbering. Her spirit man was it had no life. So not always the case, but there are some of the things that can be a stronghold of depression, of suicide, of giving up on life that runs in your bloodline. It can try to stop the anointing. Because listen, the one of the things, the, the spirit of God is the life of God. The anointing, the Holy Ghost is the Zoe of God. It is the life of God. 
And when we prayed for this lady, we prayed to break through so that her body, so that the life of the spirit, the anointing would flow. Wherever you find the anointing locked up, damned up, jammed up, blocked up, suspect an, an enemy operating there and command that thing to be broken in the name of Jesus. And also uh, another, another thing is, I told you these spirits will also attack causing things to constantly get stolen. Everything's always stolen from you. You can get a hold of something that can't hold it. When you've got a generational curse operating against your life, you can look back at your family. We couldn't hold nothing, couldn't hold a piece of money. You know, some people tell me money just runs through my hands. I mean, that there is a sign of a spiritual stronghold operating in the name of Jesus, we pray, but that the spirit of the living God would break that stronghold over your life that causes money to just go through your hand. Now, the Bible did say this, wealth gotten by the seat shall diminish. So if it is honestly gotten through labor, through truth, being something that belongs to you, I pray that the spirit of the living God would loose you from that financial thing that is draining or causing you never to appreciate and use the finances you make. You are not going to be, in the name of Jesus, a slave to working that brings no fruit to it. In Jesus' name. And another trait here is promotions being blocked. Everybody steps up before you. You have more knowledge than the one stepping up in front of, behind you, but they go in front of you. We ask the Father to break that thing too. Break that stronghold that says you will always be a laborer like a slave but not a ruler in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we ask the Father to break that on your job. We are not talking about someone else actually being qualified and you just didn't get chose because it wasn't for you. We're talking about you're always getting chose over. I ask the Father in Jesus' name, you ask the Father in Jesus' name to break that cycle because you don't want to have all of the know-how, all of the knowledge, training and working. The job loves you being there because they want to use what you have but they never appreciate you enough to promote you. So we command every promotion that has been hindered by the enemy, we command it to be broken. Also, the, the other one that I want to say here is a, an attack on your prayer life. In other words, a stronghold that makes you have to fight to pray. Now, listen, any intercessor worth their salt knows that there are times that when you're going into prayer and warfare, you have to push, you have to press through in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. That's normal. But I'm talking about no prayer life, dead prayer life, feeling like you're just like, like when it comes to prayer, you can't seem to get a prayer, but, but you can do everything else all day long. When you try to go to pray, you get lethargic. You get all sleep out. You get all lulled out by doing anything else. If the, even when reading the Bible, there is an attack going on there that needs to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray against it. See it as an enemy because prayer and intimacy with God is how the things are introduced into the earth. Through our prayer life is the way that God uses our voices to declare and decree his spirit, his wisdom, his word in the earth. Had, the, had it not been for those in my family line that prayed for me, had, had it not been for those in my family line that prayed for the salvation of our generation, I believe in the earth that I would have been bound up and not even made it. Yes, Christ died for our sins, and Christ also delegated that responsibility of prayer and intercession to help usher in through evangelism, preaching of the word, usher in those that would be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for Monday morning, God. Had fun talking to my mama Saturday, Father. Thank you for Monday morning, God. I rise far up. I rise with vision, with purpose, insight, and strength. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, for your Holy Spirit causing us to accomplish everything that you called us to do. Oh, by the way, I serve notice on every conjure worker, root worker, or person angry with me, or any demonic jealousy, envy, spite, detention, or evilness. I command your intent to fall to the ground. I fear you not. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray the blessing of God because of all these angels are around me, but God Almighty, for the word of the Lord declares that the angels of God and camp of us, of salvation, 
do deliver. Thank you for my angels that come about me. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that I have a two-edged sword in my hand, the word of God coming out of my mouth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you that I prosper going in and going out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that the work that I'm doing in the kingdom will come, will come past the whole globe. Lord God, I give you praise for it. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that every demonic backlash set against me, set against all that I have, that it will fall to the ground and come to nothing. I thank you this morning that these people of God that are listening at this morning, that, that they will go to work far up, rise up today, and conquer the strongest things that are coming against them, and never give up well guys tell you like i usually do let me catch y'all in another teacher i got to go start playing with some people doing some wise counsel catch you guys later bye bye